Okay, I'm talking about finances. <laughs> he said he's not coming to talk about finances, he's talking about children. But I'm now talking about finances. God will help all our children. God will keep them, protect and preserve them in the name of Jesus. Second Peter chapter 1, I'll read from verse 1 to 3. We'll be doing some teachings. We'll be doing some teachings this morning. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Verse 3. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. So God has given unto us all, every single thing in this life that we can ever need. But he gave it to us through the knowledge of him that called us to glory. And virtue. He didn't give it to us. Now, skill could be partaken, could be part of how he gave it to us. But ultimately, he gave us all things, take note, that pertaineth to life and godliness through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you may um, ask yourselves first and foremost. Um, let's establish something. God owns everything. In Psalm 50, Psalm 50, and I read from verse 8 to 12. It says, I will not reprove you for sacrifices or thy bond offerings to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of your house, nor he goats out of your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle upon a thousand hills. Verse 11, I know, please take note, all the fowls of the mountain, the wild beasts of the field, they are mine. I know each and every one of them. Verse 12, if I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. So God has established ownership as Adonai, as the owner of earth. He went further in Haggai, the book of Haggai chapter 2. I told you we're having a teaching this morning. Hope you're not bored. All right. Haggai chapter 2. I know you rarely ever get bored if it's money. We're talking about money. People don't get bored. Haggai chapter 2, verse 8, it says, The silver is mine, the gold is mine, saith the Lord. Then in Psalm 24, Psalm 24, it says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So we've established one thing. He owns everything that is in this life. Then he said that he has given us every single thing that we need or can ever need through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. He buttress that further in Romans chapter 8. Looks like we're doing Bible study, right? Verse 32. We're supposed to be Bible reading. But I said the Bible reading can take formats, can take even a hymn, can take a song, can take a prophecy, can take a teaching. So Romans 8.32 says, 
says that he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him, he's establishing again, with him also freely give us all things. Now, Second Peter said, chapter 1 says, he has given us everything we need in life through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Romans 8 says, he is giving us all things freely with Christ Jesus. Meaning, any of these things you will get from God, the Lord Jesus must be involved. I'm establishing, I'm going somewhere. Everything in this life belongs to God. Of everything in this life, he looks at you that everything you may entirely need in your life, far beyond what you can ask or think, he has given you freely, but with Christ Jesus involved. Now, what are the terms of Jesus for you to have it? Because Jesus must be involved for you to have it. Luke 11. And if I ask before I go to Luke 11, where are these things kept? Most of the things that belong to God, where are they? Let's go to Isaiah 45 first. I read from verse 1 to 3. He said, the gold is mine to see. Where's the gold and the silver? He said, the cattle, the beasts, they're mine. Where are they? Where did God keep them? Or where are they kept that God didn't keep them? Isaiah 45 from verse 1. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand have hold him to subdue nations before him. I will lose the loins of kings to open unto him the two living gates. The gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee, make the crooked place straight, I'll break in pieces the gates of brass, cut and sunder the bars of iron. I will give thee the treasures of darkness, the hidden riches of secret places, that you may know that I, the Lord, which call thee by name, am the God of Israel. So most of the gold are in the secret places of darkness. That's where most of them are. Most of them. That are to be given to you. Most of them are with the hidden treasure storehouse of darkness. Now, does that mean Satan has a warehouse that he keeps all the gold and silver? Well, for Jesus to live two years in Egypt without working and his family, they brought treasures of darkness from the wise men. They call them the Asian Brotherhood. They are like the Amok. They are a cult. They are stargazers. They gave him the gold, frankincense and man, the gold which they spent to stay two years in Egypt without working. It was with the Eastern Brotherhood as an occultic group of darkness. That's where Satan's storehouse is. When Jacob went to work with Laban and he was leaving, after 20 years of hard work, he still couldn't access. You know, in Zechariah chapter 1, verse 18, it says, And I saw four horns. And I said, What are these horns? He said, These horns have been sent. To ensure that Judah does not raise her head above a particular point. Judah can eat, Judah can drink, Judah can wear clothes, but Judah must not cross a point. And those horns ensure such the authorities and rod of darkness, so that you will work. A man worked for 20 years. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay, but he can't play in the big league. And what did God do? God had to give him. With Christ, they now want to transfer. 20 years of hard work can't transfer him into the league of the big boys. No, it cannot. It will give him appreciably sustenance to eat and to drink and to dress. And Jesus said, life is more than that. Life is what? More than that. And after 20 years with his wife and kids, when it worked, they said, this is what your pay is, which is in order. And the Lord said, no. <laughs> I'm going to take off the riches of darkness and I'll give it to you. Now, take this rod. Now, what he did was not work. That was, not, that was knowledge. 
not work. That was what? Knowledge. Then they transfer the riches of darkness. You think Laban is a good guy? No, that's a man with idols. But the wealth is with him. It's not with Jacob. To get it to Jacob, the Lord must get involved. The skill is not enough. The Lord must act and involve in that skill. Then they will do a transfer. Then you cross the barrier of those horns. Nobody can cross. Listen, no being can cross those horns without God. Who will be you? You will just walk and be okay. Hmm. And for Joseph, he said, we have wealth for you, but he's in the hands of Pharaoh. Is Pharaoh the good guy? No, he's, a, he's, a, he's a judge of darkness. So you will see where Satan has stored his resources with his men. And you saw how Joseph got it. Which work can make him have what he got in Egypt? No. God gave him wisdom and what? Favor. What work will Daniel walk in Babylon? That he will have what Nebuchadnezzar put on him and made him third ruler in the kingdom. He interpreted a mystery that all his magicians could not interpret. He told King this dream. Only God can reveal that to a man. That's where those horns hold. He said, we don't stop you. We will stop you from living a normal and a good life. You can live a normal life. But if you want to play at the elders of the gates, you have to cross us. We won't let you. And God says it's time to cross that barrier. And that takes me to Luke 11. That takes me to Luke 11. Today you will cross it. I read from verse 14. He was casting out a devil and it was dumb. And it came to pass, the devil was gone out, the dumb spake, and the people wondered. But some of them said he cast out devils through Bezebel, the chief of devils. Others tempting him, sought of him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, the story still continuing. Here is a dumb man who can't speak. He could eat, he could drink, he could work, he could wear clothes. But there's something Satan took, and I believe that is his right hand of glory in life. I believe it is true speech he will cross the barriers of the horns. And without speech, Satan knows. That's why King Agrippa told Paul, you almost made me a Christian. When Paul was making nets, Satan didn't touch him. When Paul was doing Satan left, when he was preaching, no, he said, we'll let this man preach. Because that preaching will take you to the league of the gods. It will break the barrier of the horns. And Satan sent a messenger. Say, your job, listen. If this man is making tent, let him make tent. Or if he's brewing wine, let him sell. Any business is doing, let him do. But we know that it is through preaching. This man will cross the barrier of the horns and assess all the treasures of darkness and rule like a lord and be subject to the lord of lords. Seize that preaching. Make sure he does not preach. And any time he went to preach, there was a stirring. He never finished preaching because there's always confusion and commotion. And Satan left every other thing but preaching. And I'm sure this man's voice too is what will take him out to that league. And they took the voice. And they left the hearing. They left his sight. They left his hands. They left his legs. Do anything you want to do. We will make sure that it was done, baby. You will make sure you don't speak because we know the oratory power God has given into your speech. The day you start speaking, the world will bow at your feet. And to stop it, they seize this voice. Satan doesn't seize things. He doesn't have much arsenal. He doesn't have much resources. He doesn't have much troops. He went with one third of the troops of heaven. God still has two thirds. And Jesus alone is more than 10 million of all of them together. So he's at a disadvantage. So he doesn't have time to be seizing things. So when he looks at you and he sees, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. But of all, 
This is where Christ is in you, the hope of glory. It is in this gift that God will take you. He will face that gift and seize it. Then leave you with the rest. <laughs> doesn't have time to see so many things. He doesn't have time. No, 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 no. No. He can give you a fantastic job that will fetch you well to stop you from a gift that will catapult you into the realm of the gods. He can use a job to stop you and give you a fantastic job that will busy you but earn you enough to travel abroad for a holiday. You think holiday travel is the greatest problem? <laughs> Let's go on. So, we can understand why he took the man's voice and left his sight. You can understand why he took Bartimaeus' sight. He didn't take his voice. You can't. <laughs> Where you? Well, let's go on. <clears throat> he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, "This is like supposed to actually be a message. It's gone beyond Bible reading. It's taking too long. It's beginning to take too long. Actually, it's supposed to be a Bible reading." But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, "Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. A house divided against itself falleth." If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because you say, I cast out devils through Beelzebub. And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. But if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is upon you. So, there are two issues. He's cast the dumb spirit out. The man is speaking. Then they accused him of using Beelzebub. So he addressed the issue of the Bezebu, now coming back to the dumb spirit again. And he's still speaking further on it. Then he says, when a strong man armed keeps his palace, his goods are in peace. When a stronger than he comes upon him, overcomes him, takes from him all his armor wherein he trusted, he divides his spoil. Now, he has now skipped the issue of the contention of whether he's using Beelzebul or not. If, he, if they didn't say that, when he said, and it came to pass, the dumb man spoke, and people wondered, he would have continued with, when a strong man armed, he would not have used, he would not have said about, uh, if I by the spirit. So he was addressing the accusation they made, that he cast out spirit by Beelzebul. And after finishing it, he's now continuing after casting the dumb spirit out, trying to make you see a point, which is when a strong man armed keeps his palace, his goods are in peace. So when Satan took that man's voice, he became Satan's goods. He became what? Satan's goods. <laughs> now, when a stronger than he comes upon him, overcome him, strips him of his armor, trusted, then he divides his soul. He took the spoil. From where? From the treasure of darkness. So, uh, what's your name? You can't speak. We found out that Satan took his voice and stored it in the warehouse and kept an, a soldier, a demon, armed to the teeth to guard it. Why will he guard the man's voice? I told you, those horns have no business with stopping you from eating and drinking. They don't care if you eat. They said the Judah must not raise his head. That voice is the glory of God in that man. That's why they left his sight, they left his hands, they left his legs, they left his hearing. So long as that voice is in Satan's treasury, all that man will live and die is to eat and to drink and to die. But the day he gets that voice back, Olabu Shakanda. So Jesus now saying, I bound the strong man because I'm the stronger man. I disarmed him with the weapon which, in which he trust. Now there are different weapons. The armor of Satan includes deceit. The armor of Satan varies. Then I went into Satan's storehouse, took his voice back, and gave it to him. And he spake. Mm. 
What does that mean? There are too many treasures, with some of you's name tag on it, in the storehouse of Satan. What am I doing this morning? I'm going to that warehouse. To do what? To bind that strong man. To do what? To strip him of his armor. And then to do what? And divide his spoil. How? When I take the spoil, he didn't say I have the spoil. He's going to divide it. Why? Because I'll take the spoil that belongs to Femi Batye. Ah, eh, Yinka, oh, Batye. Oh, yeah, Batye. So he divided the spoil back. That's why he said in Isaiah 45, I'll give you the riches of the secrets of darkness. Here, it's a voice. In some cases, even in Jesus' time when he was ready to ride, was a donkey. Where was the donkey? In his care? No, it wasn't in his care. It wasn't in his care. When it was time to pay tax, where did Satan put Peter's gold? In a fish. That's why he said, he, Verse 23. He that is not with me is against me. He that gathered not with me will scatter because I am the one that knows where he kept that gold. I am the one that knows where that fish is it's in the ocean. I am the one that will tell you whether to use hook or net. Though it is yours. Though Second Peter says he has given you all things. Romans 8 says Freely, with him, not freely by yourself. Freely with him. Listen carefully. You don't really need Jesus to eat and drink. In the true sense of it, many do eat and drink and are not Christians. But if you want to cross the barrier of those halls and enter into that glory template that they've raised for you, prepared for you, you need it. Because he's the one that knows where the gold, the silver. Like I told you, Satan's storehouse is the entire earth. Some of his storehouse are in fish. Some of his storehouse are in temples. Some of his storehouse, they're everywhere. Not a physical storehouse. The wise man is a storehouse. They traveled 900 miles to give Jesus his due and the parents. They were not meant to walk in Egypt. What if they couldn't get it? Joseph would look for work in Egypt for two years and work hard to take care of his family. That's not written. This morning. <clears throat> this morning. To the God, to the King, to the Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ. I project myself into the realm of the spirit. Every warehouse where your goods are stored, every place in the north, in the south, in the east, in the west, that has Satan's storehouse with your goods in there. I come against every strong man manning those palaces in the name of Jesus the Christ. I bind such strong men because I am the stronger man in Christ Jesus. I cripple such beings. I strip them of their armory. Now I send angels, for it is written, you are ministering spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation. And I dispatch you in the name of Jesus the Christ. Enter all these warehouses. For everyone here watching online, every partaker of this grace, that you find goods belonging to them, take them out. Bring them to their bars in the name of Jesus. Every horn that hitherto had been limitation in your life, it is destroyed right now in the name of Jesus. 
every oppression of the kingdom of darkness that he that door had been hindering you from assessing what is yours. Such oppressions are destroyed now in the name of Jesus. He said, money definitely has wings and can fly. Jesus said, look to the field, it is ripe. For I have sent you to reap where you did not sow. Others have sown. You now what? Gather and reap. Both yours. You know, in the year 2000, he said, I've commissioned you to destroy the spirit of poverty in the continent of Africa. You know those strong men, their spirit of poverty. They deny people access to what is theirs. Then Satan gives it to those who pay dues to him. And he takes, he says, the child, as long as he's a child, does not differ from a servant, but is under tutors and is under governors until the time appointed of the father, meaning they will administrate his life. What is meant for him in the will, he can't have access to it until he matures. They give them to tutors who administrate, who now eat and give him what is less than what is his. But that has come to an end this morning. I'm not shouting, no, but I'm speaking with all authority. In the name of Jesus. That has come to an end this morning. Receive what is yours. From the field that is ripe already, receive your harvest. Be filled with your own harvest. Let your bands overflow. Let your bands be filled with plenty. Let your vats overflow. In the mighty name of Jesus. When they wanted to give Peter gold, the Lord said, take a hook. Stand by this side, just drop it. Any fish that comes, just pick it. There's gold in it. It's not for Peter to go to the sea and be looking for fish and be throwing net. No, 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 no. The Lord will guide you. He will give you the requisite wisdom of what to do to have You've already received it to have it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jacob walked 20 years. His pension and gratuity, when you put it together, is nothing compared to those few days God taught him what to do. When he had that, Jacob, nobody didn't complain. But when he took those rods, the Bible says, Laban says, even his children said, Jacob has plundered our father's house. Abby, that cold tied down that that man thinks is old. It's not his own. Let him just go and untie it and bring it to you in the name of Jesus. You will have abundance and no lack in the name of Jesus. You will lend, you will not borrow. You shall have no lack. You will lack no good thing. In the name of Jesus, God will give you wisdom, riches, and honor. They will come after you. Durable riches and righteousness, they shall be yours in the name of Jesus. The Lord will bring you into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains, and depths that spring from valleys and hills, land of wheat, land of barley, land of vines, land of fig trees, land of pomegranates, land of olive oil, Land of honey, land of crude oil, land of gold, land of bauxite, land of bitumen, land of all sorts of good things, of the fatness of the deep that lies in the soil. In the name of Jesus, you shall lack no good thing in this land. In the name of Jesus, you are blessed. 
You will not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. You will not stand in the way of sinners. You will not sit in the seat of the scornful. Your delight will be in the word of the Lord. In the word of the Lord, you will meditate day and night. You are like a tree planted by the rivers. You bring forth your fruits all year round. You will not know when heat comes in the name of Jesus. Because the Lord is with you, you are prosperous. You are exceedingly fruitful in the name of Jesus. You shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the time of famine, I prophesy you will be satisfied. The Lord supplied all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. For God has blessed you as he has promised. You will lend to nations. You will not borrow. You will reign over nations. None shall reign over you. You will hearken unto the voice of the Lord. You will obey God. All the blessings of the Lord, they will pursue you. They will overtake you. You will be blessed in the city. You will be blessed in the field. Blessed is the fruit of your body. Blessed is the fruit of your work. Blessed is your cattle. Blessed is your kind. Blessed is all that concerns you. In the Lord open unto you the good treasure. The heavens, they will give you your rain all year round. They will bless the work of your hand in the name of Jesus. Let your gates be open continually. Let them never be shut, neither night nor day. Let men bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles in the name of Jesus. God has given you riches. He has given you wealth. He has given you power. You will eat from it. You will not walk and another eat. You will eat from it. You will eat from it. You will rejoice in your labor <coughs> in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You are planted in the house of the Lord. I command you, flourish in the courts of God. Flourish in this grace. Flourish in this grace. If this grace is real and it's of God, let it work for you. Let it work for you. Flourish in it. Abound in it. In the name of Jesus. To your old age, you'll be fresh. To your old age, you'll be flourishing. God will prove through you that there's no unrighteousness in him. In the name of Jesus, God will cause people to go out of their way to give unto you. They'll give unto you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. They will give unto you. Men who have made promises and is in their capacity to give. Father, give them the grace to carry out the promises they have made to you in the name of Jesus. You'll be rich in this life. You'll be rich towards God. God will cause men, he will cause you to come to the wealthy place. You will greatly delight in the Lord. Your seed will be mighty on this earth. Your generation is blessed. Wealth and riches are in your house. You will live inheritance to your children's children. And all the wealth of the sinner, they will be transferred to you. You will honor God with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. Your bands are filled with plenty. Your vats overflow and they burst out with new wine. In the name of Jesus, the Lord bless your substance and accept the work of your hands. May grace work for you. May grace work for you. May grace work for you. In the name of Jesus, may you prosper. May you continue to prosper. May you keep prospering till you become exceedingly prosperous. May you obey the Lord. May you serve him. You will spend your days in prosperity and all your years in pleasure in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe it, say amen. If you believe it, say amen.